the Geneva Motor Show, Automobile Models and Marketing. In the interview, Opel CEO Karl Thomas Neumann. Mr. Neumann, you previously managed Volkswagen's Chinese operations. Now you're the top executive at Opel in Germany. Is that a step up? In every sense, Opel has entrusted me with an amazing opportunity. Opel has more than 150 years of history, a history of innovation, emotion and dynamism. I'm extremely excited to be a part of the company's next chapter. An exciting challenge. What is the first thing you're going to do? The first thing we're going to do is unveil four new models in a spectacular world premiere here in Geneva. Introducing these models is the first thing we want to do to bring Opel back to the forefront. So you'd prefer to talk more about cars and less about the crisis? You're correct insofar as Opel has shown it can responsibly move forward. Our Works Council worked with the IG Metall Union and set a plan for Opel's future in Germany. That is a major achievement. What are the important points regarding Opel's Germany plan? What do you hope to achieve? We need to take a pause and concentrate on the brand, on Opel's products. Opel is good at making cars. We have to focus on that strength. You want to cut costs and develop new models at the same time. How is that going to work? That does work together. The models that we are showing here, I could not have imagined a more perfect start at Opel than to present these new models. Part of our Germany plan is to invest billions of euros in 23 new models that will soon hit the market. We will completely modernize 95% of all our motors and invest in 13 new motors. But how are you going to finance everything and make a profit? We have a 10-year plan. We're calling it Drive 2022. Our mid-term goal is to become profitable again around 2015. Our central goal is to grow our market share beyond where we are today. Opel has around 40,000 workers. Do you really need so many people? I regret to say we have had to reduce the number of our workers and we will continue to do so under our new Germany plan. But it's important for us to grow. We want to take back market share. Achieving that, we will be able to offer more secure employment. What about Opel's locations? Does Opel need so many locations? We have determined Opel's future locations in the plan that we've put together, and I am confident this plan will help Opel achieve its future goals. Opel was on the brink of bankruptcy for years. What's different today? We have a completely new situation with new leadership, and we have a 10-year strategy with financing from General Motors. And I think most importantly, we have a new range of models, unlike anything we've had for years, which will carry Opel into the future. General Motors' influence on Opel, is that a positive or a negative? It's important that I am now a member of the board at General Motors. That was a difficult decision, and it wasn't certain you would be chosen. For me, that was important. I'm a member of the board at General Motors. So it's something you demanded? Yes, and I sit in Detroit where the decisions are made. Early on, I made sure to confirm that General Motors is committed to Europe. For General Motors, Europe is Opel. You can see that in our plan and in our financing. We are moving forward in Europe. But there are markets that Opel is not allowed to compete in. Do you regret that? Because GM is there with similar models? That is something that I hear a lot, but it's not the case. Opel can compete in any market where Opel has a chance at being profitable. 
And we've shown that in growing markets like Russia and in Turkey, we can be successful. We're looking to China. That will be an important assignment for me, to develop a China strategy for Opel. So you're saying foreign markets outside of Europe will become more important for Opel? They're already important. The question that I have to solve with my team is deciding which markets are the right ones. How do you improve the image of a brand that has, let's say, a negative image at the moment? Not because of its products, but because of rumors of bankruptcy and other bad press. What is your marketing strategy? The most important thing is to convince people of our products. We have to communicate our products to our customers. And we have to bring a stronger and more positive message in the future. So making good cars is enough? No, I believe the brand is important, but Opel already has a strong brand with 151 years of tradition and we want to communicate that moving forward. How are we to imagine that? What do you want to do besides develop new products? You're making new investments. When you say new leadership, what do you mean by that? Are you drawing up new leadership positions? We have a completely new lineup, and the new team has already put together a 10-year plan, and we will work on that plan step by step. What is your personal plan? How much of your time are you willing to invest until you say that was it? We have a mid-term goal to become profitable by around 2015. That's an important target for me. Personally, I would like to stay on with Opel and lead the company to success. Opel is dependent on the European market. The market here was hit hard by the Euro crisis. How are you dealing with this? We're also strong in the German market, and the German market has not been hit so hard as, say, the southern European market. We're also strong in England, and we are making gains in developing markets like Turkey and Russia. We plan to develop on this progress. Opel has lost market share in Germany. What is your market share goal? Opel is still selling more than one million cars a year in Germany, and we are number three in Europe. That means there is still room for growth. We are the third biggest car maker in Europe, ahead of Renault. Given that the market is so difficult, that's a fantastic achievement. It shows we're on the right path. You're an electrical engineer. What role will electric motors play in the future for Opel? Until now, there hasn't been much progress. Quite the contrary. We are the only manufacturer that has an electric car on the market, the Ampera. Sales, however, are slow. The move to electric is difficult but necessary. Opel has shown we can move forward on this. We have the technology, we have the head start, and we have to build on that. The government has stated a goal to have one million electric cars on the road by 2020. Do you believe this is realistic? I believe it was the right move to set a challenging goal. Opel has played and will play an important part in achieving this goal. In the long term, we will. I don't want to speak about definite deadlines, but in the long term. So one million is not very realistic. Then it will occur a bit later, but electric cars will gain in importance, especially in cities. But what has to be done to promote electric cars? What do you believe as a car manufacturer? Electric motors are still very expensive to build. That's because of the small scale of production and because the technology is still in its early phases, like with the battery. Given that fact, I believe it is necessary to financially support the consumer who wants to switch to electric. This would help jumpstart the process. What do you think of sustainable concepts of mobility? The word shared economy is a popularized term. The fact that people may share cars instead of owning them. Is this a threat to manufacturers? 
Problem für Sie als Hersteller? Yes, society is changing, but I also see that people still have a strong affection and enthusiasm for the automobile. We will definitely contribute our own ideas and vision for the future of transportation and mobility. You moved here from China, where transportation is a serious problem, especially in major cities where traffic doesn't flow. What kinds of concepts for the future did you see there? What seemed promising, especially for you as a manufacturer? Certainly for major cities, the only solution is to have a multi-tiered approach. That means that public transportation will play an important role, and car sharing will also have a part to play. But there's no general universal solution. The problems in Beijing are different from the problems in Geneva or Frankfurt. It's important that one approaches these problems with an open mind. Today is my third day at Opel, and there are going to be a number of difficult problems for me to wrestle with. That will definitely be one of them. Do we need cars in the future? Be honest. Yes, I'm confident that we will still need cars. Of course, there's a bit of saturation in Europe, but in a number of markets like Turkey and Russia, there is a large amount of pent-up demand. We need cars. Your time in China must have been interesting, as you stated earlier. What kinds of ideas have you brought back with you? What kind of attitude? The attitude is important. Not everything is easy in China. But the Chinese have the right attitude. They trust that things are moving forward. It's the attitude that I want to bring to Opel. That we can work together and move things forward. And I think that is exactly what we've shown in the last couple of months. Thank you, Mr. Neumann. Thank you.